Tom Aspinall firmly believes that he holds a critical advantage over John Jones if their paths eventually cross inside the octagon. The British fighter, fresh off his ascent as interim heavyweight champion, was in attendance for UFC 309, where Jones delivered a commanding performance against Stipe Miocic. Jones retained his heavyweight belt with a third-round technical knockout, punctuated by a spinning back kick to the body that sealed Miocic's fate. Yet, for all the accolades and dominance Jones displayed that night, Aspinall sees a potential vulnerability, one rooted not in Jones' technique or physicality, but in the way he prepares for opponents. Aspinall's confidence stems from the unique nature of his own fighting career. Known for finishing opponents in spectacular fashion, his fights rarely last long enough to reveal any discernible patterns. In fact, Aspinall holds the distinction of having the shortest average fight time in UFC history, just over two minutes. Unlike Jones, whose extensive career offers hours of footage for study, Aspinall's body of work leaves little for opponents to analyze. This lack of tape, he believes, presents a significant challenge for Jones, a fighter renowned for his meticulous preparation and ability to dissect the strengths and weaknesses of his adversaries. Speaking on The Ariel Helwani Show, Aspinall shared his perspective on how this lack of available data plays into his favor. He loves to study opponents like this, Aspinall said of Jones. He has no chance of doing that with me because my average fight time is the shortest in UFC history at 2.02. All 10 fights, that will keep him up at night for sure. Aspinall emphasized the element of surprise he brings to the table, describing himself as a massive, massive question mark for Jones. The contrast between the two fighters is stark. While Jones boasts one of the most decorated resumes in mixed martial arts, with countless championship bouts and victories against a wide array of opponents, Aspinall is relatively new to the spotlight. His rapid finishes and ability to adapt make him a puzzle that even a veteran like Jones may struggle to solve. He's got a lot of octagon time over a lot of years, and I've got next to nothing, Aspinall explained. There's next to no footage of me out there apart from bouncing people's heads off the canvas. He has no idea what to prepare for, and that is fantastic for me. This unpredictability, coupled with Aspinall's technical prowess, positions him as one of the most intriguing challengers for Jones. Aspinall's striking is sharp, his grappling is refined, and his ability to finish fights quickly has made him one of the most dangerous heavyweights in the UFC. He's also a confident and cerebral fighter, unafraid to analyze potential matchups and identify areas where he can gain an edge. For Jones, who relies heavily on game planning and strategy, facing an opponent as unorthodox and unpredictable as Aspinall could prove to be a unique test. Despite Aspinall's willingness to take on the reigning champion, Jones has not been as enthusiastic about the idea. Following his victory over Miocic, Jones expressed a desire for big money fights, indicating that he's uninterested in stepping into the octagon unless the payday is substantial. He has even floated the idea of retirement, claiming that he has little left to prove in the sport. He's said it himself, he's not interested in fighting me unless he gets F you money, Aspinall noted during the interview. This has created a potential impasse, with Jones' financial demands serving as a possible roadblock to the fight. However, Aspinall remains confident that the matchup will eventually happen. He believes that Jones' competitive nature and legendary ego will make it difficult for him to ignore the rising threat within his division. I know we'll fight eventually, Aspinall said. He's got a gigantic ego, and he's not the type of person to walk away without proving he's the best. Dana White, the UFC president, has also contributed to the intrigue surrounding a potential Jones-Aspinall bout. White previously promised Aspinall a shot at the undisputed heavyweight title following the Brit's stunning victory over Sergei Pavlovich, where he claimed the interim championship. Aspinall's rapid ascent has only added to the anticipation, with many fans and analysts viewing him as the rightful next challenger for Jones. Following speculation about potential injuries suffered by Stipe Miocic in his knockout loss to John Jones at UFC 309, his manager, Lloyd Pearson, has clarified that the former heavyweight champion did not sustain any broken bones. This reassurance comes amidst concerns raised by fans and medical professionals about the toll of the spinning back kick to the body that ended Miocic's fight in the third round. Miocic, a two-time undisputed heavyweight champion, 
had returned to the octagon at Madison Square Garden after more than three years away from competition. Despite his decorated career and reputation as one of the greatest heavyweights in UFC history, his comeback ended in defeat, as Jones delivered a devastating kick followed by ground strikes to secure the win. The Independence, Ohio native was visibly compromised after the kick, leading to widespread speculation about possible injuries, including a lacerated spleen and broken ribs. In the aftermath, Miocic announced his retirement from professional mixed martial arts, closing the book on a career that saw him rise to prominence as one of the most successful and respected figures in the sport. While rumors of significant injuries circulated, Pearson assured fans that Miocic emerged from the fight without any fractures, quelling fears about long-term physical damage. The confirmation allowed fans to focus on celebrating Miocic's storied legacy rather than dwelling on potential health concerns. Throughout his career, Miocic has earned widespread acclaim, not only for his achievements inside the octagon but also for his humility and dedication outside it. His retirement prompted heartfelt messages from across the MMA community, including Francis Ngannou, who shared the octagon with Miocic twice in memorable heavyweight bouts. Ngannou expressed gratitude for the opportunity to compete against the Ohio firefighter, underscoring the mutual respect between the two champions. Miocic's retirement marks the end of an era in the heavyweight division, where his contributions helped elevate the profile of UFC heavyweights. As fans bid farewell to a fighter who exemplified toughness, resilience, and sportsmanship, the focus now shifts to the evolving landscape of the division, which John Jones continues to dominate. Meanwhile, Miocic can reflect on a career filled with milestone victories, record-breaking title defenses, and a legacy that cements him as one of the greatest heavyweights in mixed martial arts history. John Jones, the former UFC light heavyweight champion and current heavyweight king, further solidified his legendary status by defeating former titleholder Stipe Miocic in dominant fashion at UFC 309 in New York City. The victory pushed Jones' professional record to an impressive 28-1, with his sole loss still attributed to a controversial disqualification early in his career. Despite this milestone, Jones has yet to claim the top spot in the UFC's pound-for-pound -pound rankings trailing behind lightweight champion Islam Makachev. Makachev, riding high after a decisive submission win over Dustin Poirier at UFC 302 in June, remains the pound-for-pound -pound king in the eyes of the UFC rankings panel. This decision didn't sit well with UFC CEO Dana White, who once again unleashed his frustration on social media. In his Instagram stories, White vented his displeasure with the voting process and reiterated his desire to overhaul the system. I have to get rid of these clowns," White exclaimed, Zuck, let's get this AI deal done ASAP. His reference to Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg underscores White's ambition to replace human rankings with an AI-driven alternative, likely as part of UFC's recently announced partnership with IBM to integrate advanced analytics into the sport. The current ranking system relies on a panel of media members who vote on fighter standings by weight class and pound-for-pound -pound status. Eligibility is limited to active UFC fighters, with champions and interim champions automatically occupying the top positions within their respective divisions. These champions, however, are open to voting for pound-for-pound -pound rankings. The process often leads to contentious debates, as it prioritizes individual panelists' opinions, sometimes yielding results that fail to satisfy fans, fighters, or even UFC leadership. The debate surrounding the rankings highlights the larger tension between subjective analysis and data-driven evaluation in professional sports. Jones' latest win is a testament to his unparalleled dominance across multiple weight classes, yet the rankings panel continues to place Makachev ahead, citing his consistent victories and technical prowess. Meanwhile, White's impatience with the current system suggests that a shift to eye-driven rankings, fueled by real-time data and analytics, could be on the horizon, promising more transparency and consistency. As the rankings controversy unfolds, Jones can rest assured that his accomplishments speak louder than any list. With multiple title defenses, victories across two weight classes, and a nearly spotless record, his legacy as one of the greatest fighters in MMA history remains unshaken, regardless of the official standings.
Misfits Boxing's decision to host a kickoff press conference featuring Darren Till and John Fury on the same stage turned out to be as chaotic as one might expect. What began as an event to hype the upcoming fight between Till and Tommy Fury on January 18, 2025, at Co-op Live in Manchester, quickly descended into a verbal and physical free-for-all. Tempers flared, water bottles were hurled, and even KSI ended up soaked in the crossfire as pandemonium erupted before the pre-fight face-offs. The fireworks began with a heated exchange of words between Till and John Fury, Tommy Fury's outspoken father, whose penchant for Theatrix is well-known in boxing circles. The back and forth escalated quickly, with Till's sharp tongue and Fury's combative nature fueling the tension. The highlight of their verbal jousting came when Till, blending humor and provocation, suggested he'd use his MMA background to his advantage if the fight didn't go his way. At the end of the day, if I can't beat you, I'll just kick you in the face, Till quipped, referencing his experience as a mixed martial artist. John Fury, never one to back down from a challenge, retorted, if you kick me straight in the face then it's gonna be a proper fight then, isn't it? Till doubled down, goading Fury further, then I'll win because I'm a proper fighter, you're a boxer. If I'm losing the fight, I'm just gonna go boom and kick you in the face. The tension reached a boiling point when John Fury, visibly riled by Till's provocations, lost his composure. As Fury rose to confront Till, the atmosphere spiraled out of control. A water bottle went flying, drenching KSI, who was seated nearby, and chaos ensued. Security rushed to separate the parties as shouting and shoving broke out, leaving onlookers scrambling to make sense of the melee. John Fury's reputation as a wildcard precedes him, but even for those familiar with his antics, today's outburst was a step beyond. At one point, Fury appeared to tear off his shirt, a move that has become something of a trademark for him in heated situations. Meanwhile, Till's antics seemed calculated to stoke the drama, positioning him as the unpredictable bad boy in this unconventional boxing matchup. While the Theatrix may have overshadowed the original purpose of the event, the spectacle could work in Misfits Boxing's favor. The promotional outfit thrives on blending combat sports with viral moments, and this pre-fight chaos may succeed in drawing eyes to the event. Whether this portrayal of Till as a loose cannon boosts ticket sales remains to be seen, but it's clear that the promotion is leaning heavily on the entertainment factor to drum up interest. The clash between Till and Tommy Fury promises to be an intriguing matchup, pitting an MMA veteran against a boxer in a setting that favors the latter. Till's playful threats of bending the rules may be tongue-in-cheek, but they underscore the stylistic contrasts at play. Meanwhile, Tommy Fury is coming off a high-profile win against KSI and looking to further solidify his position in the influencer boxing scene. For now, Misfits Boxing has successfully generated buzz for the January showdown. As the build-up continues, fans can likely expect more colorful banter, dramatic outbursts, and unexpected twists, hallmarks of the promotion's unpredictable events. Whether the fight itself can live up to the chaos of its led up is another question entirely, but one thing is certain, Till vs Fury will not lack for entertainment. The Ultimate Fighting Championship UFC, is embracing the future of sports analytics through a groundbreaking partnership with IBM, integrating artificial intelligence into its operations with the introduction of the UFC Insight Engine. Powered by IBM's advanced data platform, Watson X, this new technology aims to enhance live events by providing real-time on-screen analytics. Fans will soon experience fights in a completely new way, with access to data such as fighter tendencies, predictive match outcomes, and potential methods of victory, all delivered seamlessly during broadcasts. Set to debut in early 2025, the Insight Engine represents a major milestone for the UFC. By leveraging IBM's granite models and the extensive library of match data the promotion has accumulated over the years, the system will deliver insights that not only deepen the understanding of the sport for fans but also offer significant advantages to fighters and their teams. These analytics could become invaluable tools for MMA coaches, who may use the data to tailor strategies with unprecedented precision during training camps. The collaboration has been hailed as a transformative moment for the sport. Grant Norris Jones, head of global partnerships at TKO, expressed his excitement about the possibilities, emphasizing that this partnership is about revolutionizing the fan experience. According to Norris Jones, 
UFC's collaboration with IBM signifies a leap forward in how audiences engage with MMA, combining the drama and athleticism of the sport with cutting-edge technology. Jonathan Adeshek, senior vice president of marketing and communications at IBM, shared a similar vision, pointing out that the iDriven platform will not only captivate existing fans but also attract new ones by offering innovative ways to connect with athletes and the action inside the octagon. This integration of AI mirrors trends seen elsewhere in sports, such as the Professional Fighters League's Smart Cage, which tracks detailed metrics like strike speed and fighter movement. However, UFC's Insight Engine is set to go beyond surface-level data, introducing more comprehensive analytics and predictions that could reshape how fights are understood and enjoyed. For fans, this means a more interactive and immersive experience, complete with insights that reveal the strategies and nuances of each bout. For fighters and their camps, it could serve as a powerful tool, shedding light on an opponent's tendencies while providing a competitive edge in preparation. This partnership underlines the UFC's commitment to innovation and its ongoing efforts to stay at the forefront of the sports entertainment industry. By integrating AI with real-time data analysis, the promotion is setting a new standard for how combat sports are presented, offering an unprecedented level of depth and engagement for its global audience. While fans await the official rollout of the Insight Engine in 2025, the buzz surrounding its potential impact signals a new era for MMA, where the fusion of technology and athleticism promises to elevate the sport to uncharted heights.